Now, coming on two years ago, when Keith and I were speaking over, I believe it was in Colorado, and Keith had talked about the name, and I had sort of mentioned it, and then we were sitting in the home of this man afterwards, who was our host there, and they usually don't put us up in these nice hotels like they do here. We're usually in people's houses. We're in this man's uh, house. Keith was sitting there in the living room with him. I was in the dining room munching on a bowl of shredded wheat, which I like to eat after my presentations. And uh, I'm sitting there, and I'm chomp, 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 and Keith is talking to the man back and forth. And Keith, and they're talking about the name. Now, this man is what I would call, and I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but he's what I call a Jewaby. Have, have, have you met some of those people? A Jew be, a Jew wanna be, and I'm not saying that to insult him. Uh, I guess I'm being a little bit obnoxious, but um, but what I mean is he loved God, he loved the God of Israel, and being a Christian, he realized, okay, Jesus is a Jew. I want to be like the Jews, just like that Messianic Gentile I met all those years ago. This man, he wanted to be like the Jews, and he emulated the Jews in all kinds of ways. He even had, the man, the man was in his 70s, and he went at his Messianic congregation. They did a bar mitzvah for him. Now, you have to understand, a bar mitzvah from where I come from is what you do for 13-year-old boys. Um, so this man in his 70s is doing it. Okay, I'm sure for him that was very moving and beautiful. It sounds strange to me, but I could see from talking to him and hearing him, he loved God as much as I love God. And he's sitting there talking to Keith, and he says, when I came into this whole thing of the Hebrew roots, they told me, never speak the name Jesus. Jesus is an evil name. Only call him Yahshua. That's what, they, that's what he was told. I'm not saying that. That's what he was told. And one day he's thinking and he says, if I'm supposed to call the son Yahshua, because that's his true name, so they told him, what should I call the father? And he went to his congregation leaders and he said, you told me to call the son Yahshua. What should I call the father? And they said to him, you don't need to know that name. And I remember he's sitting there and he says this to Keith. They told me I don't need to know that name. And Keith says, it's in your Bible in Hebrew. I wish I could just show it to you. And the man said, but they told me I don't need to know that name. And Keith says, but I wish I could just show it to you. And the man said, they told me I don't need to know that name. And Keith said, I wish I could just show it to you. And I'm eating my shredded wheat and I'm thinking, oh God, Keith, just go show it to him. Your Bible's in the other room, just do it. And then the man got up from his own couch and he was about to walk out of the room. He was about to walk out of his own living room. And I saw the fear in his eyes, the fear of being confronted with the name that his leaders had told him he didn't need to know. And he shouldn't know that it was dangerous for him to know that he needed to stay away from and avoid. And when I saw that, it broke my heart. And I made, it made me think of this verse, of this verse which speaks about the son of the Gentile who joins himself to Yehovah, the one who loves the name of Yehovah. That's what it says in verse 6. Who grabs hold of his covenant and keeps the Sabbath. That someone like that would be told not to love the name, to fear the name of the Father, it broke my heart, and I realized when Yeshua taught the multitudes and intended this message to go forth far beyond the Galilee, and he taught them to sanctify the name of the Father, he had an intention there for that name not to be hidden, not to be suppressed, not to be feared, but to be sanctified. Can I get an amen? Amen. Well, the prophecy doesn't end here. In verse 7, it says, And I will bring them to my holy mountain, and I will make them rejoice in my house of prayer. This is the most famous verse in the Bible, am I right? Just about in the Old Testament. I will make them rejoice in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and uh, peace offerings shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Say all nations. all nations. That phrase, the house of prayer for all nations, what, I mean, this whole congregation is named after it. It's one of the most famous verses in the, in the Bible. Most people stop reading here. They got to the famous verse, we're done. But the next verse is the key verse to me. And this is verse 8. Now, verse 8, I'm going to publicly share that this is a verse I don't believe. Uh-oh. Michael, you took a big risk. It might have been a mistake. I don't know. But this is a verse I do not believe. And let me read it to you and I'll tell you why. It says, Thus says Lord Yehovah, who gathers in the dispersed of Israel... I will gather others into those who I have gathered. And I don't believe this verse. I believe that God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. And some people think I'm nuts for that. They think, oh, what are you talking about? It was billions of years. I believe with every fiber of my being that he created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. Seven, six literal days. That's what I believe. Laugh at me if you want. But I don't know it for a fact. 
It's a belief. And how do, why don't I know it for a fact? Because I wasn't there. And I believe that God took my ancestors out of Egypt and gave us the Ten Commandments on the anniversary of this day, 3,500 years ago. But I don't know it for a fact because I wasn't there. This verse I don't need to believe because I've lived this verse. I mean, when he said this 2,700 years ago, when Isaiah preached these words in the public square in Jerusalem, my ancestors hadn't even been exiled yet. They said, what is this guy talking about? He's crazy. He gathers into the dispersed of Israel. We're here in Jerusalem. We're going to defeat the Assyrians. We're going to win. And then we'll defeat anybody else who comes. And then they were scattered twice and then gathered back in like he promised. And the reason that this is so powerful, I think, isn't just that he gathered me in and, and saved me and my entire family from, from the ovens of, of Europe, but I'm seeing all over the world, he's gathering in those others. I'm seeing all, on every continent, he's gathering people. And people who can't explain it, they shook the family tree and nothing fell out. There's no Jews that they know of in their ancestry, but something's burning in their heart and it wasn't bad pizza. Something's burning, it's burning in their heart and they know that the God of Israel is calling them to his covenant and they can't explain why. And it's this prophecy, it's a fulfillment of him. He said, just as I gather in the dispersed of Israel, I will gather others unto those who I have gathered. So this is, this is what we're seeing all over the world. All right.